Hello there, friends. I can't believe it's the week of Christmas. Already we've been through the whole month with uh, Mary and Joseph and their travels. And today we're going to talk about a story that you've heard for a long, long time. And um, I'm just going to try to add a little to it so that you can have a, a little bit of different perspective or understand it a little bit more. Um, before we get started on this, I would like to tell you um, a story that happened to me yesterday. It's really true. And I want you to think of this story when I tell you uh, about Mary and Joseph. Um, yesterday, I was uh, headed to an appointment. Dan and I were headed to an appointment. And just before we went out the door, I thought, oh, I need to put dinner in the crock pot. If I don't put it in the crock pot, it's gonna to be too late when I get home, and then we'll wanna eat out, which we all like to eat out, but we need to stop eating out so much. So, um, Dan was frustrated with me because I was trying to get that food in the crock pot ready to go. Well, we left and headed to the appointment, and on the way there, um, on one of the roads we turned on, to, we were almost to the appointment, there was a really bad accident and uh, the police were all there, and um, it was just um, not a good situation. So Dan immediately said, if, you, if we hadn't waited for you to put that food in the crock pot, we would have been involved in this accident. So I like to think that that's, that's God's timing, that he put that in my mind to put the crock pot on so that I could, that we could both avoid that accident. So I'm so thankful for little things like that, that sometimes we don't realize there's a reason and we just have to be patient and think about it and not get all upset about it because God's in control. So that leads me to our story today of Mary and Joseph. And we're in Luke um, chapter two, and it's the first seven verses in chapter two. And you all know the story of the birth of baby Jesus in Bethlehem. Well, it starts out with a Roman emperor, uh, Caesar Augustus, and he has decided that he wants to do a census of the country because he, he wants to tax people, and he figures a census would, would help with that and give him more money. So I think that he had people go back to their um, land where they or were from, like say you live in Indiana, but you were born in Illinois, so you had to go back to Illinois. Well, they were going back to, Mary and Joseph were going back to Bethlehem because that was their hometown actually, where they now they live in Nazareth. So, Mary and Joseph are headed um, to Bethlehem for this um, census. Well, I do believe that God planned this at this time because he wanted things to happen his way. And so, and I believe that Caesar um, Augustus wanted them to go back to their hometown for the census because he thought with the people around their families that they wouldn't be so upset about having to do this because they would be able to visit with the families. So Mary and Joseph are headed back there. Mary's, um, as you always know, are here in the stories riding a donkey and Joseph is following. It's many, many miles, so it takes them like three days of walking to get there. And when they get there, um, the time comes for Mary to have the child. Well, there was no place, because there were so many people in Bethlehem for the census, there wasn't any place where they could stay. And um, Mary was ready for to deliver baby Jesus. So um, as you know in the story, it says there was no room in the inn. Well, they actually believed that it was a cave um, sort of area that uh, baby Jesus was born in. And um, the animals a lot of times were fed there. And so there was a, um, like a feeding trough, the way I understand a feeding trough. And Mary delivered baby Jesus and he was wrapped in swaddling clothes. And at that time, swaddling clothes were like strips of um, fabric that they wrapped around the baby to keep them um, snug, like they were held in their mother's arms all the time. So um, uh, kept them safe too, because they were all wrapped up. And of course, you know the story of the, um, the star and the shepherds and everything, but um, the main thing is that God chose Caesar to have this census so that Mary could have baby Jesus in Bethlehem. And because he was born in this stable, he was, it was not a big fanfare. Um, like, 
having a party when the baby's born. There was no party. There was no, it was like he was born and nobody knew it except maybe the shepherds, the, the ones that God spoke to through the stars or the angels. And so it was not, it was just like having a baby, okay? Where, remember Elizabeth had John and John was born a few months earlier. Well, John's father was a, a temple priest. So when John was born, John the Baptist, I'm talking about Elizabeth's son, there was a big celebration at the temple because he was born. But with baby Jesus, there was nothing. It was just, he was born in human form, God in human form. And so that we could, he could grow up like us and be more like us and not be anything really special. And only certain people who the spirit came into knew that this baby was the Messiah, the promised Messiah. So when you think about this story, I want you to think about how God works in our lives and how Mary was meant to go have that baby in Bethlehem because they wanted the Messiah to be like all of us. Like it didn't matter if you're rich, if you're poor, the Messiah, Jesus, the Lord was there for all of us and he was going to grow up just like us. So he understood what we were going through and he could show us how we could overcome um, the situations we're in now. And God wanted to prove that he knew what we were going through and Jesus was here for us. So I want you to remember that in this story that no matter what happens to you, God's in control, God knows what's going on. Um, to even bring one of the little uh, Christmas carols that we sing, uh, here comes, or um, you better watch out, you better not cry. I like to think, because um, instead of, uh, he knows when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. Think of that as God, not Santa, but God. <laughs> and so always remember that and that he's always there. And so um, during this Christmas season, I want you to be um, especially thankful and remember that God's with us no matter what we're going through. And if something bad happens, there's a reason. Something good's going to come out of it, just like my Crock-Pot story. So please remember that this season. And I hope you all have a really, really Merry Christmas. And we'll see you next year.